We are Team TSR Grow. Our project was Automated Spectral Data Acquisition and Analyzer. We worked under the technical direction of Mikhail Segal, President of TSR Grow. My name is Robin Hall, Electrical Engineering. I am joined by my colleagues William Guo, Computer Engineering, and Rory Heslin, Electrical Engineering. TSR Grow is a plant growth lighting solutions company. They offer full spectrum remote powered LED lighting for greenhouses, power management and distributed lighting control, environmental monitoring and control, and a complete grow management and monitoring system. Our project had three main points of motivation. First was to automate data collection. Second was to eliminate human interaction during testing. And third was to set a standard testing methodology. The anticipated best outcome of our project centered around automating data collection. We needed to collect photosynthetic photon flux and photosynthetic photon flux density with a photosynthetically active radiation sensor. We needed to develop grids to test a variety of light fixtures ranging from 4 feet by 4 feet to 16 by 24 feet at heights from 6 inches to 72 inches. We needed to create a GUI application to aggregate, sort, and store information taken during light tests, and this data must be easily manufactured into lighting reports compatible with TSR's current system. We achieved our anticipated best outcome. Here is the old system used by TSR. An LED light fixture is suspended over a hand-drawn array of points. A TSR employee has to manually take each light reading by holding the PAR sensor at each point. During the fall semester, we devised this way of automating data collection. A robot would follow a predefined grid of points, stopping and taking a light reading at each one. And here's our final outcome. We achieved exactly what we set out to do. A line following robot is carrying the PAR sensor through a predefined grid of points, stopping to take a light reading at each indicated marker. Our project consists of three major parts that need to be communicating together to achieve the anticipated best outcome. Our robot is powered by an Arduino Uno and MKR1000. This is connected to the Everfine PLA30, the PAR sensor used to take light readings. And all of this information is fed into a GUI application that stores all the information taken during each light test. Throughout the year, I worked to develop the Arduino Uno line following robot. We chose a line following robot because of the accuracy and repeatability of its path. It is critical to TSR that the light readings be taken in the same point every time. This ensures each light is being tested accurately the same way every time. Using the Arduino Uno, we were able to control the robot's motors, infrared sensor array, and communication to the Arduino MKR1000 making it the best controller for our project. The infrared sensor array is what allows us to follow the line and stop at specific points to take light readings. It outputs analog values of the light that is reflected off the ground, enabling it to detect the line. I divided the code into cases, one to control the robot motor functions, two to handle the communication to the MKR, and a final one to handle the turning of the robot. The perpendicular lines are how the robot knows to stop and take a light reading. We originally thought that we could use a color sensor to detect these points, but soon realized that the IR sensor could do that task, further optimizing our final result. One of the best features of using the Arduino Uno was its ease in communicating with the Arduino MKR, which Rory will discuss further. This video shows how the robot handles turns and moves from point to point. One of the biggest technical accomplishments I made this semester was the change from smooth curves to 90 degree angles. As was shown earlier, we thought that we would have smooth curves connecting each row of sensor points. However, in order to test points that were close together, like on the 4 foot by 4 foot grid, it proved that our robot was too big to make the necessary tight turns. I decided to develop a way for the robot to make 90 degree turns using the infrared sensor array and an incrementing counting system. This advancement allowed for us to make the tight turns necessary to test any and all of TSR's products. Hello, my name is Rory Heslin. So for the second semester, I was mainly involved with the linking devices and troubleshooting of any issues that came up. The 
linking of devices is mainly a problem of getting a Windows-based C-sharp program and PLA30 to have two-way communication with our robot. So what we have achieved is basic two-way communication scheme via a web page, which has two possible posted values, can be interacted with to turn a pin on the robot to high or low for notification when done with the PAR test so that it can continue on its path. So the Arduino Uno follows a path and has sensors to see the desired location for a data point. Once our robot is in the location, the Arduino Uno sets a pin to high. That pin is directly connected to the MKR1000, which allows it to post a Go signal to the web page. This allows our Windows machine C Sharp program to download the data from the web page and automatically trigger the PLA30 special analyzer. After the PLA30 is done with its PAR test, the C Sharp program interacts with the web page by sending a high value, which sends a notification to the robot to continue on its path. As you see on this page, is some of the code that is involved with the MKR1000. You can see that pin 6 is designated as the output pin, which is connected directly to the Arduino Uno. And on the right, you can see some of the code which allows our c -sharp program to interact with the web page, which then consequently sends a signal to the Arduino Uno to continue on the path after the PAR test is taken. Setting up hardware and using Photoshop to create the pathways. So here are some of the pathways that I've produced. As stated, I use Photoshop to create these three. The left and right pathway size is 100 inches by 130 inches each, and the middle is 72 inches by 96 inches. The left path has 12 inch spacing between each point. The middle path has a spacing pattern of 6 inches by 12 inches, and the right it has the same 6 inches by 12 inches. The pathways which I have finished completely account for the fact that the PLA30 PAR sensor lays 1.5 inches back from the sensor array on our robot, which sees the data location or perpendicular markers on the map. Therefore, when it is coming from the left, as it will in the beginning of the test, it will stop the desired location so the PAR sensor is in the desired position 1.5 inches to the left of the first data point. Hello everyone, my name is William, and here again shows the general block diagram of our complete system. So for this semester, I was placed in charge of creating the GUI and also setting up the communication between the Arduino Uno, the and MKR, the Everfine PLA30, and also the GUI. So further in detail how our system works, we essentially first have to power on all our applications, the robot, the GUI, and also the sensor. The GUI and the sensor will connect through our uh, application window. And from there, we, the, we need to power on the robot, which will then read the lines and arrive at its first data point location. From there, we start the auto test on the application window. And here, we wait for the robot to update its web page. And once it's once the robot has arrived at its uh, its location a data point location, it will update the web page with the file with the following signals. The GUI application will read from the website, and if the robot is at a data point location, it will trigger the sensor to trigger a measurement, and therefore, and then the sensor will go back into waiting state for another data tr trigger. If the robot is not at a data point location, the robot will continue to keep going until it's arrived at a data point location before it updates the web page and waits for a signal from the GUI. So here shows a video of how our complete system works. We first in the, in the video, we first show that of our GUI, we start the GUI, search for our sensor device, and connect to it. From there, we can also see that the robot has arrived at the first data point location. We click auto test, which it triggers the sensor, it takes a measurement, and the robot continues along the path.
The robot will continue running along the path until it's collected a set amount of data points, or you can manually enter a uh, expected data point, which the robot will then stop at the inputted data points. There's also another feature that we've added, which is exporting the data that we collected on the GUI. After it's finished collecting all of the data, it will ask you for inputs on the layout window. And once you've inputted all the layout windows, it will export all the values within the layout window and also the test data, which will be saved into a .csv file. The .csv file then can be used and manipulated to create a heat map for TSR customers. And that is our complete system. Next up, we want to talk about the economic impact for the company by completing our project. By completing our project, we want, through our project, we want to set an industry standard for the lighting and testing method. And we also want to reduce time for testing, for testing a fixture and also free employees to work on other critical projects. Lastly, we want to thank all our technical directors, our consulting direct, our technical directors, TSR employees, and also our cast own director for setting up this amazing project for us. Thank you.